All right, take two on this. The numbers are rolling. Good afternoon, dear brethren, saints, sisters, brothers, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God. Hello, good afternoon. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures that we're going to be looking at today. Read along with me. Uh, word for word, verse by verse of what we're going to be looking at. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily where these things be so. Read along because the mouth goes quicker than the brain sometimes. As many of you know, you watch any of these things that the Lord has given your servant to do. Got something very, very interesting and fascinating to share with you today that the Lord kind of shared with me. And I just got to share this with you. Just got to share this with you. It began today in my devotional reading this morning, because right now as we're talking, it's 12, 10 according to that clock, and it's 12, 11 according to the computer, so go pick one. But in my devotional reading with the Lord this morning, was reading in John chapter 11, and it got, the thought that dawned on me. It's like, you know how a lot of these atheists like to tell you that the you know, the scriptures are not scientific. That's a bunch of balakness. Uh, bologna sandwiches, okay, that is. But something very simple, okay, just a very simple thing about what scientific is. Now, science, scripture, what science is, um, it does equate onto what a form of knowledge is. We've, we've covered that before, and that's not the main premise of this video. But I wanna, wanna go through, um, Webster's, there is a video on the channel somewhere where we go scripturally and see what science is according to scripture. Okay, that's not the main point of this video, but I want to show this to you, okay? Science from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Okay? Science. In a general sense, knowledge or certain knowledge, the comprehension of or understanding of truth or facts by the mind. The science of God must be perfect. In philosophy, the love of man's wisdom, okay? A collection of the general principles or re leading truths relating to any subject. Pure science as the mathematics, as the mathematics is built on self-evident truths. But the term science is also applied to other subjects founded on generally acknowledged truths as metaphysics or, an, or on experiment and observation as chemistry, C-H-I-M-I-S-T-R-Y, and natural philosophy, love of man's wisdom, philo, okay? or even to an assemblage of the general principles of an art as the science of agriculture, the science of navigation. Arts relate to practice as painting and sculpture. A principle in science is a rule in art. Three, art derived from precepts or built on principles. Science perfects genius, Dryden. Four, any art or species of knowledge. I like the way that it says that. No science doth make known the first principles on which it buildeth. Hooker. Five. One of the seven liberal branches of knowledge, viz. Grammar, logic, rhetoric, arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, and music. Astronomy. Not astrology. There's a difference, okay? Note, authors have not always been careful to use the term, uh, terms art and science with due discrimination and precision. Music is an art as well as a science in general. An art is that which depends on practice or performance, and science that which depends on abstract or speculative principles. The theory of music is science, the practice of it, and art. Okay? That's what Webster says. And there is a video where we talk about what science is. But like I said, the and you, you check a modern uh, dictionary. It's totally different than what we just looked at in Webster's 1828 dictionary. Okay? But one of the things is that an atheist will say to you, right? 
Well, the scriptures aren't scientific. Blogness. Here's a, here's a real quick example, and then we'll get into the meat of what we were are going to do this. John 11, verses 11 on to verse 17. Okay, well, I, we've addressed this in several videos, but I'm going to address this in the first one. Okay, first few minutes of this. These things say, these things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. <laughs> then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go on to him. Send these flying. Then Thomas. Then Thomas, which is called Didymus, then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, then said Thomas, Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Now, here's the point. Verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days. Four days. And in verse 39 of John 11, we read, Jesus said, take ye away the stone. We can go off on that for hours. Okay. Martha, the sister of him that was dead. Now here's the scientific part. Saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he hath been dead four days. Four days. And this led on to the thing of the third day. And with this, you can tie in the book of Jonah with being in the whale's belly or the fish's belly, excuse me, or whatever, for three days and whatnot and whatnot. Okay, you can make that tie in. But four days. Now, Mr. Scientific Atheist, you tell me. And this, you'll, you'll, you'll have, you have to acknowledge this. What happens after the third day of a body that is dead. Hmm? What happens after three days? The gases, the, you know, it starts to bubble up and the gases start to release. Hence, decay. Hence, stinketh. Right? Come on, you can admit that. Yes, that, yeah. So the scripture right there shows us what? After it's been four days and by now he stinketh? And then the third day reference here in Psalm 16, verse 10, about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was dead, buried, and rose again after the third day, the three-day thing. Okay? And also in Psalm 86, just one verse as well. Psalm 86. Psalm 86, verse 13. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Okay, another tie-in for verse um, thir uh, 10 in Psalm 16. The point is, okay, the three-day thing, okay? Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day. Okay, three days. After three days of death, what happens? The body starts to stink. Okay? Hence, demonstrable, observable, provable, and whatnot, and replicatable, or whatever it is, as meaning modernly for what science, science and scientific is. Okay? So, right there, a very simple, very, very simple demonstration, simple, that yes, the scriptures are, in fact, incredibly scientific, okay? Incredibly. But see, what is regarded as science today is not, is not what science was regarded 
uh, in the time of you know, you know Webster's 1828, and of course during the time of the scriptures and whatnot, during the time of our Lord when he was on the earth the first time. Okay? All right. But that led on to this, the third day. Now, all scripture. Okay, let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That was 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Okay? And then, of course, let's read, get this out in the open. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Okay? Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, okay? Third day. Let's look at the third day in Scripture. Now, this is describing the third day of the creation of everything. God in six days created the heaven and the earth and everything therein, and he rested the seventh day. Okay? Okay? What is being described here is literal creation. Look at me. It is literal. Okay? What we are looking at in Genesis chapter 1, verses 9, on to verse 12. Okay? This is a literal happening. Okay? This is God in the third day of the creation process. Okay? This is literal. Okay? Very first verse in Scripture. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Simple. Simple. That's it. Okay, the atheist will come up with many, many words uh, that, and hence becoming fools, you know, <laughs> professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. The fools say in their heart, there is no God. Okay, all right. To us saints, through the scriptures, the authorized version, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Period. Simple. Nada. No mas. That's it. But check this out. Check this out. The third day. We are going to examine this in a different context for instruction in righteousness. Because verses 9 on to verse 12 is literal. Okay, well, we're going to read to verse 13. But it's literal. This is God creating stuff. Okay, this is literal. This right here, verses 9 on to verse 12, is to be taken literally. But I want to show you something that the Lord shared with me for our instruction and in righteousness on this. And I think you might find this fascinating, especially a couple of you brethren. Verses 9 on to verse 10 to begin. And God said, let the waters, hinge that, waters, hinge that. God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together onto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so and God called the dry land earth and the gathering in verses 9 and 10 you see gathered twice okay and the gathering together of the waters you also see waters twice okay called he sees and God saw that it was good all right gather together John chapter 12 John chapter 12 one verse John chapter 12 verse uh, 32 John chapter 12 verse 32 and I if I be lifted up from the earth, I will, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Verse 33. This he said, signifying what death he should die. He was talking about him dying on the cross. Okay. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, verses 14 
on to verse 18. Not Galatians, you twit. Beg your pardon. Okay. Ephesians 2, verses 14 on to verse 18. Different dispensation. Okay. <laughs> Different dispensation because remember, when the Lord was on the earth in John chapter 12, he had yet to do what? Die, bury, and raise again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? So, oh, you spit my tongue. <laughs> 14 on verse 18 in Ephesians 2. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the en enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit, capital S, unto the Father gathering all people together in one who come to him his way, the way of the cross. Okay, broken, contrite, and in fear of him you call upon his name, and he save you, okay? The gathering together thereof. And also, as we have seen, that waters is mentioned twice. Now, according to context, this remember, what we are looking at is literal creation. I, we're, we're just looking at this for a different kind of think for for our instruction and in righteousness waters sometimes in scripture according to the context according to the context can be a reference on to what let's see revelation 17 verse 15 one verse 17 15 one verse and revelation 17 verse 15 and he saith unto me the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Hmm. Very, very interesting, isn't that? Okay. So we see the gathering, death, burial, and resurrection. There's only one way to be saved today, and that's the way of the cross, which is uh, death to yourself. Uh, broken of your self-righteousness, being a man or a woman, uh, taking your responsibility and not uh, passing the buck to someone else, okay, and having the living hell scared out of you, and calling on the name of the Lord, wow, spider, and calling on the name of the Lord and that he may save you, okay? Gathering together, okay? All right? Verse 10, And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters, there's twice again, called he seas. And God saw that it was very good. Waters. And when we are gathered together as the body of Christ, okay, what, what happens? What's the result of that? John 4. John 4. Check this out, man. Check this out. John 4, verses 13 and 14. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So we see in the two appearances of water in uh, 9 and 10, okay, for our, this is our instruction in righteousness. Because like I said, the that is the literal, literal account of the creation. We're just looking at this for our instruction in righteousness, okay? Waters can be likened sometimes in scripture as unto people. But see, when we are gathered together as one, okay, one in Christ, in Christ, okay, that's what that's talking about, okay, we are one with Christ, all right, what happens? Out of us flow rivers of living water. Hmm. And John 7, 38, 
John 7, 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Isn't that something, huh? Isn't that something? Look at that. Go back to Genesis. Okay? 9 and 10 again. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. Our instruction in righteousness. This is literal. Our instruction in righteousness. We, the body of Christ, gather together in Christ. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Those who are saved who went the way of the cross, that way is east. Okay, and we came according to his precept for his salvation. Okay? We are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay? And in verse 10, earth. Uh, man was made of earth, and we're going to cover that. We're, we're dirt, okay? And gather, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. Hmm. Seas. And see, out of us, out of us, because we are gathered, we are one with Christ, out of us comes what? Living water as ambassadors for Christ. Hmm? Now, verse 11. And God said, let the earth, let the earth bring forth grass. We're going to touch on the thing of grass in the next verse. But let the earth bring forth grass. Okay, Genesis 3, 17 and 19, on to 19. And on to Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed or cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And of course you can tie in about the, the uh, how it chokes the word that it becomes unfruitful, okay? In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken. For dust Thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. You know, the dead body, the organs, and the flesh will decay and go to the earth, but the bones which will become... You ever seen a, a bone, you know, besides, you know, like freeze-dried bones or something? They become really brittle. They go back to dust. Why? Because man was made out of earth. Okay? And also, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, one verse. Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Mm. 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 And God said, verse 11 in Genesis 1, Let the earth bring forth grass. We're going to touch on the thing about grass in the next verse, okay? And the herb yielding seed. And the herb, herb yielding seed. Hmm. Luke 8. Luke 8, one verse. Luke 8, one verse. Verse, we want verse 11. 8, 11. Excuse me. Luke 8, verse 11. Now, the parable is this, the seed. Also, you can tie in the thing of Abraham's seed, which will be in the description box for you, okay? Abraham's seed, okay? That'll be in the description box for you, but now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Like I said, you can tie in to that also how we are Abraham's seed. That thing will be for you in the description box. And also Ephesians chapter 6. But what I mean, but what 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 did we just see in Luke 8? Huh? What did we just see? Verse 11 and verse 8 and chapter 8. Now the parable is this: the seed is the lowercase w word of God. What is the word of God? Huh? Well, scripture is actually very specific about what the word of God is. Ephesians 6, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation, because we can know a Catholic. We know 
We saints know that we're saved and we're going to heaven, okay? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the capitalist spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, the word of God, all right? Okay, go back now to Genesis 1, verse 11. Okay. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed. Okay. Verses 9 and 10. The gathering together. We're gathered to Christ. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Okay. You can also probably try to tie in the, you know, the redemption of the purchased possession. But you and I, saints, we are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay. We are seated together in heavenly places. Okay. All right. All right. And we're gathered together as one. We are, we're separated. Yes, we are. But we are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay. We're linked by Christ. And we being ambassadors, we go out. Huh? We go out doing what? Preaching. By verbal or by demonstration of the Lord living in us. Okay. All right. And that, you know, because you might be saying, well, men, aren't, uh, men are the only ones to preach. I know that. But see, a sister, by her um, countenance, by the way she behaves and reacts in situations, uh, Peter talks about that, about that. Um, they can be just an effective witness by how they compose themselves in a society where, it's, where women are treated like objects. Okay? All right? And here in verse 11, again, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, okay? And the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. This is literal. But for this, what we are looking at, okay? After his kind. After his kind, and seed in itself, after his kind, for uh, John chapter 1, John chapter 1, check this out, after his kind, John 1, verses 10 and 11, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Meaning, Jesus Christ is a Jew, a Hebrew, okay? He made everything, okay? And the world knew him not, okay? He came unto his own, the Hebraic Jews, and his own received him not, okay? And also, also, seed in itself. John 15 John 15, okay, we're still on, you know, this one, uh, this one part of it. Like I said, this was just, uh, just kind of shared with me. In verse 11 again, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed, okay? We, the saints of the church of the living God, we came from the earth, okay? Okay. And we are what? We're to bring yield seed, the word of God, being testimony, a testimony and ambassador for Christ, okay? After his kind, John 15, verses 4 and verse 8. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide in, not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. 
Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. And this thing about seed in itself. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. An intentionally misinterpreted passage of scripture by these ridiculous bozos who say that you got to stop sinning. You can't stop sinning. But they come here and say, well, if you're a Christian, you don't sin anymore. Oh, shut up. Okay. A Christian is a Catholic. But 1 John 3 verses 8 and 9. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God, being born again, not of corruptible seed. And then, and then, then you got these twits as well, being born again is just for the Jews. Would you shut up. Will you just go, go away. Go away. Okay go away okay but born again all right we have a natural birth and another birth being born again when we come to the Lord on his terms he saves us and seals us with himself hence making us a new creature what makes you a new creature is the fact that Jesus lives within you okay because remember an alcoholic can have a changed life okay a changed life will come as a result of being a new creature. And you are a new creature because Christ in you, the hope of glory. Comprende? Okay? Yes. So, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, being born again. So, see, bread, see, bread, keep reading. For his seed remaineth in him and he who's the he the seed cannot sin because he is born of God see these nitwit filth that say you gotta stop sinning I don't sin anymore so you, you just glide and called yourself God you, you go away you go bleh, okay have very little I do. I, I have very little patience with uh, these people who come around talking about sinless perfection. That can't be achieved. Paul missed the memo. Okay? He really did. All right? Yeah. I, but anyway, his seed. The seed is a representation here of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit that dwells in the saved, born-again saint. Okay? So, this is not saying that when you are saved that you stop sinning, or else Paul was in a whole lot of trouble, and Paul actually taught a whole lot of heresy. Didn't he? <laughs> and he did not. No. No. Because sinless perfection cannot be achieved while we are in this sagging skin suit. Okay? It cannot. It's impossible. It's impossible. And you got some putts out there saying that it is possible. They lying. They crazy. Get away from them. Okay? Get away from them. They're in pride and they're lying. Two trademarks of their father, the devil. Dear friend. Dear friend. 1 John 3. 8 to 9 there is not talking about a sinlessly perfect Catholic, Christian. No, it isn't. It's making a reference to the one that dwells within the person, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Before you're saved, okay, the seed that's in you is of the devil. But when you come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you, he seals you, makes you a new creature, whosoever is born of God, born again, doth not commit sin. Why? For his seed remaineth in him, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he cannot sin. That seed, the Lord Jesus Christ, cannot sin. You can sin. Absolutely. We do it every day. But see, the Spirit 
and the Lord is that spirit, the Holy Ghost in you cannot sin. So the Holy Ghost who guides the saint will not, cannot guide you into sin. That's what this is talking about. Okay? You got to make the right choice. He's not holding the gun to your head, forcing you to do this, that, and the other. Satan ain't doing the opposite, okay? We have to make the right choice. But see, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, Spirit, soul, and body, one God, the Trinity, okay? All right? He dwells within you. He is sinlessly perfect. He cannot sin. And he remains in us. He will not guide us into sin. And he will not guide us into error into this. Okay? He won't. He won't. We can misunderstand. Absolutely. We can deceive ourselves. Absolutely. But the Lord, the Lord and the Holy Ghost, you know, the Lord is that spirit. He will lead you, guide you into all truth. Okay? This has nothing to do with sinless perfection. Nothing. It is describing of what spirit dwells within the person, spirit, soul, and body. The one and verse, what are we here? And verse 8 and 9. 8 is talking about the ones who are not saved, unregenerate, especially these infiltrating devils, pretending, putting on a facade. They're not saved. They're of their father, the devil. The seed that's in them is of the devil, which is earthly, sensual, devilish. But we saints, whosoever is born of God, born, of God, born again, doth not commit sin, why? For his seed remaineth in him, whose seed? God, okay? And he cannot sin, God cannot sin, because he is born of God. We are born again. We sin every day, okay? But God in us cannot, will not, does not sin, and he ain't going to guide you on to sin, and he's not going to justify your sin. Period. You got it? That's what that means. You keep sending me that email about that sinless perfection stuff. You can go wipe your nose with it, boy. You're deceived. You're deceived. Okay? What do you think you are, huh? You think you're God? Huh? Think you're like, oh, I don't sin anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Okay? You're crazy, boy. You are absolutely crazy. You, you plumb off your rocker, boy. You keep at me with that uh, sinless perfection stuff. I'm going to expose you. I will. I will. I don't want to do that stuff. You're not a sensationalist like the other people, apparently. But you keep after me about that uh, sinless perfection stuff. I'll expose you. I'll show your email on here and everything. Go away, you lying dog. Go back to your puke. All right, now, verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass. Grass. And now I told you we were going to talk about the grass thing. Grass, okay? And, and get your mind out of the gutter when you hear some of you, <laughs> grass. Okay. Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. 5 on to verse 8. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh, remember, shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth. The flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. Okay? The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth. But the word of our God, the word of our God shall stand forever. And of course, let's make the, the obvious uh, tie-in here in First Peter. Okay? First Peter Chapter 1, verses 24 on to verse 25. Which is referencing what we just read. For all flesh is as grass, and, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. 
And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Mm. Mm. Okay, now go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit, the tree, remember, he is the vine, we are the branches, okay, remember? Whose seed was in itself, okay? Sealed until the day of redemption, okay? After his kind, and God saw that it was good. Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, verses 16, okay? The tree that brings forth fruit after his kind. Matthew chapter 7, 16 on to 20. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs or of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, and there's only one good, and that's God. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Oh, there's so many out there claiming to be saved, but what is their fruit? Okay? People like to say, well, you, you know, try, you know, you can see fruit here online. You can. But remember, a lot of that can be fake also. Okay? It can be. It can be. Just keep that in mind. Okay? A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Yeah, because uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth spaketh. Okay? Every tree that bringeth for not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And what do we verse 20? Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. And there are some really slicker than snot Christians out there who can put off this appearance and sound really good. And you can't specifically nail them uh, uh, to one thing. But there are a bunch of little droppings where you put them together. It's like Dude, this guy's a heretic. He's lost, okay? That's why it takes time to observe some of these people, okay? All right? But you will know them by their fruits. There are some that can mimic having good fruits, but if you watch them and observe them and pay attention, and then you put the pieces together in the puzzle, and then you sit back, it's like, Dude, dude that guy ain't saved! Okay? John 7, John 7, verses 15 on verse 18. And the Jews marveled, how, no, saying, How know this man letters, having never learned? And the key that we're working off of here is in verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass, man, we're made of earth and herb yielding seed after his, the Lord's, kind. And the tree yielding fruit. We are the branches, okay? Whose seed was in itself. We are motivated by what? The Lord, who dwells in the saints, after his kind. After whose kind? His kind. The Lord, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ, it's not a promoter of Roman Catholicism, obviously. The Lord Jesus Christ is not a promoter of Calvinism. The Lord Jesus Christ is not a promoter of sleazy believism, of Jehovah Witnessism, of moronism, okay? None of that is the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. Christianity in itself Especially today, it's not the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. It is not. It is not. Quit trying to revive a dead horse. Okay? John 7, verses 15 on to verse 18. Again. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Okay? If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine whether it be God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself 
seeketh his own glory. Remember in John chapter 8 where it says, uh, let, let, let's look at that. Verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Pay attention. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, because it's of himself. Do you understand? Like we just saw in 1 John chapter 3, the two different types of seeds, if you will, the seed of the devil, which is the seed of this world, okay, which is earthly, sensual, devilish, that comes out of flesh, as opposed to the Lord himself, that what comes down from heaven. Do you understand? Okay? All right? He speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Go back to John chapter 7. Okay, where did we pay, uh, leave off? Okay. Verse 18. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Why? Because, that, I mean, we sin all the time. Yes, we do. But the seed that's within us, that's not corrupt. Why? Because that seed that dwells within the saint is what? The Lord. Okay? Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 on verse 12. It's beautiful. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Catholic, Calvinist, sleazy believist, some Baptists, a lot of Methodists, German uh, Catholics, Lutherans, okay? <laughs> Jehos, Mormons, Charismatics, Charismatics, okay? Look, if you want to fix to yourself being a Pentecostal, okay, that, whatever, um, the Pentecostal Charismatic faith is not scriptural. When did the New Testament begin, friend? Okay? Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So we go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 12 again. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Hmm. Very. very I, you know, if, uh, if you're kind of scratching your head, I'm sorry. Uh, that It's just... Just those parallels that the Lord showed me. I, I wanted to share that with you. So uh, that's going to be it for this little video. Going to get this uploaded. Uh, thank you for watching this if you do. Uh, thank you. Like I said, I, I just, the Lord just showed this to me as I uh, was finishing up my daily devotional reading with him. He just showed it to me. It's like, ooh. Tell my wife, it's like, you know, babe, I, I got a video I got to do. It's like, you made two yesterday. It's like, I know. This, this is, you know, something else. So, Anyway, I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, we love you. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Stop. Aha.